what's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to optimize Hogwarts Legacy. In the description down below, you'll find video guides for Windows, Nvidia, and more to optimize your PC even further to get even higher performance. This guide's only going to focus on changing around settings in game to get you a better experience. If you have a really powerful GPU, probably designed around AI, a 4080, a 4090, 30 or 20 series, you'll probably be more than happy with the performance that this game gives you out of the box. I have a 3080 Ti, so it more than happily brute forces its way through this game. And of course, most areas that you navigate into, as open as they appear, are oftentimes just more simply rendered, so you're not actually pushing through that much. Inside, especially when you're running around Hogwarts, there's barely any FPS drops other than those when you're running into new areas. I tried to come outside here to maybe lose a few FPS, but I really didn't go below 60 pretty much at all, except when running in between large different areas of the castle. Obviously, there's lots to this game. I've gone through the introduction and there as well. It didn't seem to drop below 50-ish FPS. Now, that being said, when you're opening and closing certain menus, your FPS will oftentimes drop to the low 20s or 30s, even on such a powerful graphics card. The first thing you'll want to do before you start optimizing or anything at all is disable VSync so you can get an accurate representation of what kind of FPS you're getting. Hit escape at any time, then open up settings, and on the tab with a cogwheel on the screen, this is the display options section. From windowed mode, you'll want to select full screen if that's available to you. However, I only have windowed and windowed full screen here, so windowed full screen is the best option for me. Though being windowed full screen and not true full screen, I'm not able to change my resolution here except for in windows. Once you have that option set as best you can, scroll down to vSync, make sure that this is turned off, and change the frame rate from 60 all the way up to uncapped at the very top to get the most accurate representation of what FPS you're getting. I'll close the menu, wait for the menu closing FPS drop to subscribe side and just like that in this area here I'm getting let's look this way I'm getting around 70 to 80 FPS with the normal default configuration of everything all the way to the max the one thing that'll mainly gain you tons of FPS if it's enabled is turning off ray traced reflections shadows ambient occlusion or lowering the ray tracing quality should you choose to keep any of these enabled I'll be turning all of these off click apply, though do note you will need to restart your game. I enabled these, didn't restart my game, so it won't have any effect here as it wasn't on to begin with. Upscale type, you should definitely choose NVIDIA DLSS if you have a compatible RTX NVIDIA graphics card. If you don't, or you have AMD, choose AMD FSR 2 here for the next best upscaler. Now there are a few other options here such as Intel XESS for Intel graphics cards and NVIDIA NIS, though that won't gain you too many FPS. You should rather stick to FSR 2 or DLSS at the very top for the best upscaling, which keeps a good quality and also gains you a ton of FPS in general. Upscale mode, the more you push this towards performance versus quality, the lower the rendering resolution of your game will be and the more AI will have to try and upscale to make it fit your monitor. If you push this towards performance, you'll notice a drastic gain in FPS, however, a drastic loss in graphic quality as well. Usually it's not too bad until you start pushing it far towards the performance side where you'll start to notice some really bad graphical glitches appearing and disappearing. For example, here's FSR 2 at quality. Standing here, I'm getting a solid high 70 FPS. If I go back to settings and instead change this to ultra performance, for example, you'll see my rendering resolution is dropped to just merely 30% of my actual resolution here. You'll usually see a huge increase in FPS. Obviously, I'm up near the upper limits anyways, so I won't gain too much, but you can see a huge decrease in quality around the facial features and things like that. Otherwise, this game still looks really really good, there's just a bit of weird blurring around my character. This is AMD FSR 2 Ultra Performance. If we head back to settings and instead change it to DLSS Ultra Performance, you'll see negligible difference. These are two really good, really high quality upscalers, both FSR, DLSS. If you don't like the blurry effect, crank up the sharpness here. Usually you'll want to have this around 30-ish percent or 0.3 for the best quality while not having things too sharp. That fixes up quite a bit of detail on the blurrier edges around objects and people. What I'd recommend you to do is to choose either FSR2 or DLSS, crank it to quality, otherwise balanced for more performance. Sharpness, somewhere around 30-ish percent, is pretty good. 
Now, would I recommend playing with no upscaler? Well, no. There's TAA Low, High, and NVIDIA DLAA. Both TAA High and NVIDIA DLAA give you the same performance, roughly, at least on higher end cards. TAA High, I'm getting around 50 ish FPS. DLAA 70, though earlier it was in the lower 60s. There we go, it's jumping around. And TAA Low should give you the best performance if you don't want to use an upscaler. Weird, I'm stuck at around 40 ish, 50 ish FPS once more, but I think it's just a little bit confused. TAA Low should give you the best performance out of any anti aliasing mode here. Though, once again, I'd just recommend sticking to DLSS or FSR quality. If you leave it on auto, your PC will try and automatically pick what's best for you, and I think as well likely switch between different resolutions to upscale while you're playing for better performance. And 0.33 is good enough. Frame generation fills in missing frames whenever things are really laggy, but you'll need an NVIDIA DLSS compatible graphics card and the Windows Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling Enabled. You can find that with Start, Opening Up Settings, a light across to Display, then all the way down to Graphics, Change Default Graphics Settings, and in here we can enable or disable Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling. You'll need that on and a restart of your PC before you can mess around with the Frame Generation option here. If you like NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency and you think it gives you more responsiveness, then you can turn this to On. If you have a much lower end CPU, set this to On plus a boost for the same effect. VSync, definitely off, frame rate uncapped, unless you're, say, recording with OBS or streaming, in which case you'll want to cap it just below the amount of FPS you're getting to leave some of your graphics card available for OBS and other software to use. Say you're getting maybe 80-ish FPS, cap it to 75 or 60, pretty simple. HDR is completely dependent on your hardware and your preferences. You won't lose too many FPS by having it enabled, but you can get a ton of graphic fidelity, especially with higher and HDR monitors. Image calibration is just your preference. You'll mess around with brightness and I think a few other options on HDR, but for me, it's just brightness and that's fine. Field of view, this is your preference. Obviously, you may gain or lose some FPS depending on what you set this to, but all in all, being a single player game, you'll definitely want the best experience for you, even if it costs you a few FPS. Motion blur, your preference as well. Turn this off if you'd like a tiny gain in FPS, but definitely turn it off if you struggle with motion sickness. Depth of field, if you feel like you need to put on glasses while you're playing this game, turn this off, otherwise it can add quite a bit of realism and depth to scenes that you're looking around in. Chromatic aberration is that weird blurring effect around things. You can turn this off if you'd like less of a camera lens effect, but this is entirely your preference, and the same goes for film grain down here. Personally, I'd keep depth of field on, unless you dislike it, and film grain on as well, just for a bit of added effect. Select GPU, obviously, if you have multiple graphics cards or a laptop with multiple GPUs, make sure the correct one here is selected. It'll be the one that's the most powerful, A, and B, hooked up directly to the monitor that you're trying to play on. When you're done with these, we can head back and gauge what kind of FPS we're getting. I cranked the field of view all the way up so I can see a bit more, and I've dropped from about 70-ish FPS to the upper 60s. Back to settings, and this time across to graphics options, we have a ton more here to go through. Obviously, at the very bottom, we'll disable all of these ray tracing effects if you value FPS, but you can turn these on, restart your game, and see the impact it has on FPS, which I'll do later on. And ray tracing quality here, dropping that if you choose to have ray tracing enabled should claw you back some of those FPS you lost, enabling these fancy features. The run benchmark option here isn't a benchmark like you'd expect with a camera that flies around and gives you a good estimation of what FPS you'll be getting. No, instead it just automatically sets all of your graphics options to whatever it assumes is best for your computer, whether that's true or not, and recommend against clicking this. Now, starting off at the very top, global quality preset. You can set this between ultra, high, medium, and low. Set this roughly based on what you think your graphics card is capable of. If I change from ultra all the way down to low and apply, close the menu, you'll see a huge gain in FPS as soon as all of that menu closing weirdness goes away. Obviously, we've lost a little bit of graphic quality and I've jumped up to 70, 80-ish FPS, though it really does bounce all around the place. In the distance, you can see some difference with the trees there, especially things look a little bit weirder, but it's definitely by no means unplayable on the lowest quality settings. That being said as well, if you don't have a super powerful GPU, even on the lowest settings, you'll probably be struggling to play this game. 
If you haven't already, it's a very good idea to update your graphics card drivers, especially if you're watching this a few days after release, as Nvidia and other manufacturers should be pushing updates to make the best of this game possible. Game ready drivers. So in the mid 80 ish FPS, we'll head back to settings, graphics, and we'll mess around here. If you want to start from the bottom and work your way up, that's a good way of doing things. Effects shouldn't have too much of an impact on your CPU or GPU, but if you find yourself losing tons of FPS as doors are shattering or spells being casted, this is something you'll want to lower if you're randomly dropping FPS in combat and action. I'll set this to medium as a good middle ground. Material quality, I would think this is different to texture quality, though there isn't a model quality here. I would assume that this is model quality just in different words. Otherwise, if they do truly mean material, it'll be the reflectiveness of things and, and how reflections are calculated, etc. You'd probably want to leave this on medium or low for the best performance here. Fog quality. This is all your preference. Once again, this option won't always have effect, though when it does, it will probably be quite noticeable. If I save my settings here and head back, you'll see there's pretty much no fog around me here at all. But if I were to head down to the bottom floor, you'd probably see quite a bit. Let's head down there. For example, out here, you can see a little bit of fog, but if I crank up the option, fog density and quality changes quite a bit. That was low, and this is Ultra. There's a small but definitely noticeable difference, especially when you're moving around. Ultimately, this is your preference, and there won't be too much of a difference. I'm getting around 60-ish FPS here, 70 looking in this direction. We'll stand still and see if there's any difference. So 70, 75. From Ultra to Low, I'm getting 75 plus FPS. So we gained a handful of FPS here, and moving around things look a little bit different. But still, not a huge difference, so you could probably more than happily leave it on a low setting to gain a handful of FPS. Sky quality, this will mostly have to do with clouds and things like that, not so much the sky box. You can probably leave this on medium or low if you don't find yourself looking up much at all. Foliage quality, obviously this as well, is situational when you're outside in a forest and things like that. This will definitely have an effect on your FPS, otherwise if you're running around stoned buildings and passageways, this will have very little effect. This is what low looks like. Have a look at all the grass on the ground, the bushes in the distance. Let's crank it up from low to ultra. You can see tons more grass on the ground, much higher quality grass at that, and the bushes are a little bit easier to see through, less pixelated. In the distance, I think there's a little bit of a difference as well, though not huge. Currently mid to high 70 FPS on ultra and down to low. We're sitting at around 80, maybe a handful more FPS. I love foliage quality at, say, medium, maybe high if you like the extra bushiness of grass and things like that. Personally, that adds a bit to the experience for me instead of running around a barren landscape, so I'll leave this on the high. Post-processing quality, this has to do with the quality of ambient occlusion, depth of field, motion blur, and lens flares. If you have most of those disabled, this will probably have very little impact and you can crank it up. Otherwise, if you do have all of those enabled, leaving this lower is probably the better option if you need FPS, otherwise leave this on medium or high. For me, I have motion blur turned off, depth of field on, so that will have an effect on the quality of the depth of field, motion blur, etc. And if you find yourself losing FPS randomly, this is definitely something that can help improve that, especially if it's happening when you're looking around. Shadow quality, once again your preference. On low and high, you'll notice very small differences in shadows as everything's very well blended and smooth. There's not really hard shadows to go around. For example, here's low. And if I crank it up to ultra, for example, you can still see there's a lack of hard shadows going on here, mostly just because of how the lighting is in this area. I would assume that in certain areas, you'll notice it more than others, though generally it's not going to be too much of a concern while you're playing the game. If you'd like extra FPS, leave it on low or medium. Otherwise, if you find shadows distracting you while you're playing the game, that is something you can turn up to hide weird jagged edges on hard shadows. Then texture quality. This completely depends on the amount of VRAM in your graphics card. If you have around two to four gigabytes of VRAM, set this to low, four to six, medium, 
roughly eight gigs high and anything more than that, you can crank this up to ultra quite happily without losing any FPS at all, as long as you're not going over the amount of VRAM available to your graphics card. Turning it up, you should definitely notice a difference in textures close up and even further away when they're much larger, but this is definitely something that you can raise up without needing to feel bad, especially if you have VRAM available. It'll have a small impact. Then view distance quality, this impacts everything, you can lower this for a around the board improvement in performance, though I'd say leave this at around medium at lowest. Otherwise you can crank it up as most areas seem to be quite divided and they really only load in when you get into different areas. If I turn it up for example, literally nothing has changed over here and neither would anything have changed in most of the castle anyways. Looking on top of buildings and things like that, the backgrounds are simplified, you're not loading in the entire world, so things are optimized for the most part in that regard. You'll barely notice a difference here except for specific levels and scenes. Finally, down at the very bottom here, we have population quality. This has to do with non-essential NPCs around the world. I would assume in cities and towns you'll notice the most difference, but if I crank it from low to ultra in this courtyard, for example, literally nothing would have changed here, as all of these are essential to the scene. Nothing's being added or removed. It's not like a busy market or anything like that. So you could probably leave this higher up, and if you find huge FPS drops as soon as things get busy, just remember to come back here and turn this down. The benchmark option here seems to just set the options as best it guesses your GPU can handle, but anyways, I've run through all of these. For me, I'll probably leave things around the medium setting, fog high maybe, sky ultra, foliage high, post-processing I'll leave it at high as well, shadow quality medium seems good enough, texture quality definitely ultra with 12 gigs of VRAM, view distance as well on ultra, population quality ultra good enough, and my ray tracing options off. With my optimized settings from ultra, things still look really good and my PC's not even sweating with a higher end GPU. That being said, looking over in this direction for example, I'm noticing a few weird graphical glitches. These will definitely be fixed on restart. I think it's just because I've been messing around with options a bit too much, but anyway. For the most part, there's a big improvement in FPS and quality hasn't been touched at all. From here, moving down, I'd set maybe low, low, medium, high, medium, medium, low, high, high, high as well, keeping that rough flow to it. And a step down, things still look really good, other than the obvious texture issues, but running around, I'm not losing any FPS as it was stuttering a little bit before. Sticking with those options is pretty good. You know the optimized settings as they would be here, and the higher end PC options of everything up just one option from here. So for the most part, that's the optimization guide complete. There are tons of options here and lots to play around with. When you're done messing around with settings, come back to the upscaler to see if you want more performance here at the cost of weird graphical glitches. I don't think the ones on the wall that we saw there are related to this. That's just my PC being weird. The rest of these options here are entirely your preference and will have little to no effect on the game. Even these colorblind options here. At the very bottom, we have HUD options and things like that. You can turn these off if you want to clean up your display, though most of these are helpful anyways. And that's really about it for this Hogwarts Legacy Optimization Guide. Once again, in the description down below, you'll find guides to get even more out of your PC and even get a better experience in this game. So thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.